Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you've been following my saga for really any length of time, then you're probably aware that one of my side quests is to find the absolute perfect material to make my fingertips out of. Currently, I'm using TPU that I over temp and get to slightly foam for my fingertips. They work pretty okay. The coefficient of friction isn't quite right. They work, but the plastic's just a bit too hard. So you don't quite get the traction that you really want for your day-to-day -day use. Although they are plenty durable when it comes to working in the shop fabricating metal brackets. Where they fall short is being tacky enough so that I can confidently pick up items that have more of a smooth texture. For instance, when I'm holding onto a grinder, I have to really bear down on it so that I can be sure that I'm able to maintain a solid grip on 10,000 RPM of death and destruction. Don't get me wrong, I can get it done, it just takes more effort than it should. In the past, I've made videos showing my casting process using Alumalite two-part silplat silicone in 10, 20, and 40 durometer. The 10 and 20 are awesome when it comes to grip, but are super lacking when it comes to durability. If I'm using them for anything shop related, they fall apart way too fast. The 40 is way better, but still for shop work, kind of a no-go. I still occasionally cast sets of these to have on hand, but I'm super selective as to when I'm wearing them. They're mostly a going out to dinner kind of thing. The next material I've tried is smooth on polyurethane in 60 durometer. A little less sticky and way less squishy than the silicone, but still not quite right for shop work. This material tends to crumble and tear. Now some of that is probably because of the surface topology that I'm shooting for on the tactile side of the fingertip. For the last while, the fingertips I've been making have concentric circles 60 thousandths wide and 45 thousandths deep. In practice, the profile allows the fingertip just a little bit of squish, and when it deforms, the coefficient of friction increases, and with that also the holding force. The next material I recently tried is called Silly Knot. It's a remeltable silicone alternative. Initially, I was super excited for this material, thinking that since the fingertips really should be considered a consumable, that when one tears or breaks, you just pocket the broken pieces, save them up, and when you have enough to make it worthwhile, wash them in the ultrasonic cleaner and cast new sets of fingertips using old material. Their documentation says you should be able to recast this material up to 30 times. The concept of no way silicon casting is amazing. The real world of it though, mm, not so much. This material doesn't seem to be dimensionally stable enough for my application. It's probably something more suited for one-off duplicating rather than a case where the material becomes the actual part. It is cool stuff though, but wah wah. So now I'm trying something different. Recently, I was contacted by a representative from Elegoo. She asked if I wanted to try out one of their new Mars 5 Ultra Resin printers. Of course I did. I love free stuff. Now at this time, Elegoo doesn't offer a flexible resin. So off to Amazon I went and I found a product from 3D Materials called Superflex Flexible Resin. It's supposed to be about an 85 durometer. Sure, this is harder than the other silicones I've used in the past, but with resin printing, I should be able to hollow out the tactile areas and get some of that squish back into the fingertips. At least that's the concept. So I've tried printing these fingertips a couple times. Well, actually more than a couple times. Each time adjusting the layer exposure time, as well as trying out different post-process cure times, all with varying levels of success. The issue that I'm currently running into is straight out of the wash and curing stations, the fingertips look great. But after you add a couple days to them, they start cracking. And not where they're hollowed out. The cracking occurs where the model is solid. Right now, I'm only hollowing out the top portion of the fingertips. And these are cracking where the metal tang goes in and orients the fingertips to the finger itself. The last set I did, I washed an IPA a couple times and then stuck them in the light curing station that iBoss was kind enough to send me a while back. 
I tried running a couple different curing cycles. I've gone from running the curing cycle once, twice, and finally just leaving them out in the sun for a couple hours, flipping them every 15 or so. I'm pretty sure that I have the scaling just about right for the tang, because it's not too tight, not so loose that they fall off, but it seems to be a consistent thing that after a couple days, small tears start to form on the tactile side of the fingertip. Now, I don't know if this is a modulus of expansion contraction type of thing, or if this is something that is actually happening from the actual use. But it's not something I was seeing when I was over molding a printed core with silicone or polyurethane. This is a feature that I've only seen using the flexible resin. Anyways, I thought I'd let you know that so far I've been getting really good results with the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra Printer. The auto leveling feature has worked every time for me. It is a bit odd just push and go and letting the machine do it for itself, but I can't say I exactly missed the whole process with the cardstock and screwing down the platform hoping to get just the right offset. This model even has a built-in camera for remote monitoring of your project and doing time-lapse videos. This machine is different than the Creality Halot 1 Plus that I looked at a couple years ago. The Mars 5 Ultra resin tray tips in order to peel the print from the bottom film rather than pulling straight up on it. This should lessen the chance that your print will just break off from the supports and fail. It kind of reminded me of how the Piopoli Moai operated. The difference there is the slicing software isn't super locked down, which is kind of always where I thought they went wrong with their setup. I'm currently using the Chi2 Box Basic that's included on the USB drive. And so far, the free version is able to do everything I need it to. So if you're in the market for a resin printer, maybe give it a look. I think they're currently running a sale on them. And I'm sure that the 3D materialized resin is a great product. I'm just not having super awesome luck with it with my application. Be sure to leave a comment in the comment section and let me know of any flexible resins or other materials that I should be trying out. Thanks for watching.